Welcome to our lecture series on engineering mechanics statics. So for this video, we will discuss about resultants of coplanar force system. So before we will start, let us uh, define first what is a resultant. So in this section, we will elaborate deeply the definition of resultant and how does it applies to different types of force systems. So by definition, a resultant of a force system is the simplest form or system that can replace the original system without altering its effect externally on a rigid body. So therefore, if we have a certain force system which is composed of uh, different types of forces or many forces, then when we say resultant, we simplify this force system to a simple form such that in a way that uh, it is composed of a single force only or shall we say single couple or a combination of both. So, uh, we can say that the system is uh, the same from the original system because we don't alter the external effect of this simple, simple form of force system, or shall we say the resultant on the rigid body. So the word simplest implies that a single force is simpler than two forces. A single couple is simpler than that the uh, two couples and a single force is simpler than a force and a couple. So as explained in the previous chapter, in general, the resultant of a force system is a force couple system. So this is in our previous topic about changing the line of action of a force acting at an arbitrary point. And from the concept of changing the line of action of a force, that if R and CR are mutually perpendicular, they can also be simplified to a single force. So the following are different types of resultants of a force system. So the first one, the resultant of a force system is a resultant force such that the resultant couple is zero. Or a resultant force and the couple resultant are mutually perpendicular. So this only happens that the resultant is a resultant force if the resultant is a force and there is no couple such that CR is zero or such that the resultant force R and CR are perpendicular to each other. The second case is that if a resultant is a, re a couple vector, shall we say CR, so therefore, there is no resultant force, only a resultant couple vector. The other one is a resultant force couple system, which is a combination of a force and a couple. But this only happens if the resultant force and the resultant couple are not perpendicular to each other, or they are not per mutually perpendicular. So these are the only three possible uh, resultants of a force system. The other one, which is the resultant is zero and the resultant force is zero and the couple resultant is also zero, this is what we call equilibrium. So this is, we will discuss this on our next lecture video, which is the next topic after the resultants of force system. So let's start first. Remember that we will have uh, different types of coplanar force system. So in this section, we will discuss on how to determine the resultants of different types of coplanar force system. So in general, we have three uh, types of coplanar or two-dimensional force system. So when you say coplanar, that is two-dimensional. So the first one is a general coplanar force system. The second one is a parallel force system and the third one is the concurrent force system. So we will discuss this one by one. So let's start first with the general coplanar force system. So when you say general coplanar force system, it is a type of force system where the forces are on a two-dimensional plane. Shall we say it is on an XY plane? Then all the forces are not concurrent or not intersecting at a common point and they are not uh, parallel to each other. So how do we get the resultant of a general coplanar force system? First is, we, we will replace the original force system with an equivalent force couple system. 
So we already discussed this on our previous lecture about uh, equivalent force system. So it will consist of a force R and a couple CR. So remember R has a components of Rx and Ry because this is only a two-dimensional force system. So the formula for Rx is obviously summation of forces X and Ry is summation forces I. Y. So this is the components Rx and Ry. And CR is basically, uh, uh, we will select the origin as our moment center. So it is CR summation moment O as shown in the figure at B. Then after that, Note by doing the first procedure, this, was, this will result with three possible outcomes. So this will have three possible outcomes. The first one, if there is no value of R, therefore the resultant is a couple only, meaning uh, we will remove this one. So meaning this is the resultant itself. Next is the couple resultant is zero, meaning there will be no couple resultant. So the resultant is a force R acting at point O. Yes, uh, which is this one. The other one is that if both R and CR has values, uh, the resultant is a force R not acting at point O. So how does it happen? So in a case that R is not equal to 0 and CR is not equal to 0, meaning they have both values, we can locate the line of action of the force, which is this one. This is the line of action of the force. So this resultant force is not acting at point O by calculating the distance D. So D here is, remember that the coupled resultant is equals to R times D. So how does this happen? Is that if we replace, uh, if we select this figure and transfer it to this one, what will happen is we will replace the coupled resultant with two forces such that it is parallel to R. The other one is like this. And the other one is this one. So this is R and R. Such that their distance to each other is uh, D. So remember that CR now becomes R times D from this particular figure because we already replaced the coupled resultant with two forces which is a force has a magnitude of R and a distance of D with each other. So to calculate D, uh, we will have CR is divided by R. So D is the distance between point O and the line of action of the resultant force as shown in the figure. What will happen to these two forces is that it will equate to zero. So this will leave us with one force which is R that is at a distance D from the origin which is point O. Note that the direction of D from O must be determined using the concepts of changing the line of action of the force. So as you can see, we have here a counterclockwise couple, meaning the two forces that I create must uh, have a sense of counterclockwise also. So next is Let's have an example. So for the force system given in the figure shown, three forces and a couple is acting on the arm, acts on the arm of an excavator. Determine the resultant and show your answer on a sketch of the coordinate system. So to solve that, first is uh, let us convert this one to an equivalent uh, force couple system. Uh, acting at point O. So to do that, we just need to calculate Rx and Ry and Cr. Uh, first one is, let's solve first for Rx. So to do that, uh, we use uh, x component to the right as positive. So we have this one. So 80 cos 40 so positive 80 cos 40 then we have 50 kilonewtons to the left which is this force right here so this is minus 50 kilonewtons so that is 
for Rx, we don't have any other x component. So the answer to that is 11.284. So we have 11.284 uh, kilonewtons. So the answer is positive, so meaning this is going to the right. So for Ry, we have summation forces Y is equals to uh, going upward, we have this one, which is 80 sine 40. So we have 80 sine 40. Then we have also uh, 60, which is going downward. So that is minus 60. So the answer for Ry is 80 sine 40 minus 60 is negative 8.5. 7, 7 kilo newton. So the answer is negative, meaning the direction of the Ry, which is 8.577 kilo newton, is downward. So next is we get the coupled resultant. Coupled resultant is the summation moment at point O. So of course, you will use this as counterclockwise positive because that is our sign convention. So we will write here our sign conventions. So let's start first with uh, 50. 50 has no moment arm, so meaning that is 50 times 0 because it passes through point O. Next is 60. As you can see, 60 is acting clockwise at point O, so that, so that is minus 60. Then, then its distance from point O is 3 meters. Next is we have 80 cosine 40, so that is clockwise also, so that is minus 80 cosine 40, and its distance is 3.3 meters from point O. The other one is 80 sine 40, so 80 sine 40 has no moment arm because it passes through point O, so that is 0. Then the other one is 350 kilonewton meter, which is counterclockwise. So that is positive 350 kilonewton meters. So this will be the value of CR. So if we calculate that, we will get a value of plus 350 is negative uh, 32 point negative 32 point 236 236 kilonewton meter so since it is negative the answer will be 32.236 kilonewton meter clockwise because our sign convention for negative is clockwise so meaning if we replace this one with an equivalent force couple system so if this is x and y the resultant force if we try to solve for the resultant force, that is square root of Rx squared plus Ry squared uh, is so the answer will be 14.17 37 kilonewtons. So the direction of R obviously since Rx in Ry is right and downward. So basically R will be like this one. Uh, the angle theta is, if you solve that theta, this is R theta is R tan of Ry over Rx. So the answer for theta is So the answer is 37.23, uh, shall we say 24 degrees. So this will be the value of R. This is R here and this is theta from the figure. Then we have coupled resultant is something like this, clockwise, uh, CR. So this is not yet the final answer because uh, this is not simplified. We just want the resultant force because as you can see from the figure, CR is 
in the z direction using the right hand rule negative z direction so basically if we will use the concept of changing the line of action force uh, we can replace uh, cr with uh, two forces so to do that let's try to do that here if we if we draw here so we have a clockwise moment cr is equals to this is y and this is x so cr from our previous solution is 32.236 kilonewton meter then we have r here r is equals to uh, 14.1737 and the angle theta is 37.24 degrees so what we will do now is we replace CR with two pairs of forces or shall we say a pair of forces which is equal to magnitude R so to do that we just retain this R right here. This is R. Then couple resultant, as you can see, is clockwise in sense. So we can do this, which is this one. So this is D. So as you can see, uh, the two forces, which is this one, this one and this one, creates a clockwise, clockwise rotation. So to solve for D, uh, D there is equals to uh, 32.236 divided by 14.1737. So the answer for that is 2.274. Uh, so 2.274 meters. So our final answer will be this. So these two forces right here will equate to zero because they are equal and oppositely directed so our final answer will be this one so r is equals to 14.7371737 kilonewton then the angle is theta 37.24 degrees then this distance right here is 2.27 4 meters that is perpendicular measured from point O so it will look like this as you can see we have the same answer so this will be the final answer so let's have here another example so from this problem, the resultant of a force system in the given figure is a 500 pound inch counterclockwise couple. Determine P, Q, and C. So we have here a force system with, uh, shall we say, four forces with two unknowns, which is P and Q, and a couple which is clockwise, uh, so magnitude of C. The given in the problem is a resultant, which is a couple, so meaning the couple resultant is... 500 pound inch so since the resultant is a couple meaning the resultant force is basically zero or shall we say the components of the resultant force since the resultant force is zero its components is also zero so if we try to solve and determine the components or the magnitude of the unknown uh, functions here which is two forces in a couple so we way to use the formulas the same formulas rx equals summation forces x then we have ry equals summation forces y and we have couple resultant is equals to summation moment at any point which is shall we say the arbitrary point point o so this is counterclockwise positive this is upward positive and this is going to the right positive so for rx equals summation forces x uh, we know that Rx is zero because from our from the definition of resultant, the resultant is a couple. So choosing all the uh, the x components, so we have first here we have 80. Then we have this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle, and this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. For Q, we have negative uh, 12 over 13 
Q. And we have, for P, we have uh, plus 4 over 5 P. So if we simplify this one, we will get 4 over 5 P uh, minus 12 over 13 Q and equals negative uh, 80. So this will be our first equation. The second equation is Ry equals summation forces Y. So if we choose that equation, we have Ry is 0. Then we have negative 20 because this is 20 pounds downward. Then we have for Q, we have minus 5 over 13 Q because Q is going downward also. Then we have P is going upward, up to the right. Uh, so the Y component is positive 3 fifth. P. So simplifying, we will have 3 fifth P uh, minus 5 over 13 Q equals positive 20. So if we try to solve equation 1 and equation 2, we will have two values, P and Q. So if we try to solve using your calculator, uh, we will get a value of we have 4 divided 4 fifths P minus 12 over 13 Q. We have negative 80. The other equation is 3 over 5 P minus 5 over 13 Q. And we have positive 20. So the answer for P and Q are 200 pounds for P. And we have 260 pounds for Q. So the next one is to get C. So to get that, we have couple resultant equals summation moment O. So the couple resultant is a 500 pound inch counter, clockwise couple, so that is positive. So we will write it here, 500, CR is 500, then summation moment at O. So we will sum up moment at O. Let's start first with 80. 80 is clockwise. Uh, clockwise from point O, so that is negative 80. Its distance is this distance, which is 2 inches. Then we have, for Q, we have a downward force and going to the left. So the downward force will not be included because it is passing through point O, so its moment arm is 0, so there will be no moment effect. So let's try the horizontal component, which is going to the left. As you can see, that is Counterclockwise from point O, so that is 12 over 13 Q, which is 260. The distance is this one, this one, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next is the 20 pound force, which is clockwise, obviously. So this will be the line of action. This is the distance, so that is minus 20 times 3, because the distance is this one, 3. Then we have C is clockwise, so minus C. Then we have for P, we have horizontal and vertical. The horizontal component will not be included. This one is not included because it will pass through point O. So we will only include the vertical component, which is uh, 3, 3 fifths of P, which is 200. So since it is counterclockwise, because it is upward here, so it is counterclockwise. So that is positive, positive that this is C. Uh, the distance is this one. So that is 6. So if we solve for C using this equation, 500 equals negative 80 times 2 plus 12 over 13 times 260 times 6. Minus 20 times 3 minus C plus 3 fifths of 200 times 6. So if you try to solve for C, you get 1 for 40 pound inch. So the answers are uh, 200 pounds for P, 260 pounds for Q, and we have 1 for 40 pound inch for C. So that will be the answer for this problem, which is determine P, Q, and C. So that will be the, we have the same answer. 
So that will be the answer. So the next type of force system that we're going to discuss for coplanar force system is the concurrent force system. So we already have this one from our previous topic about vector addition. So for concurrent force system, uh, as you can remember, a concurrent force system is a type of force system where all forces intersect at a common point. An example to that is in this figure. As you can see, we have three forces, F1, F2, and F3, which is intersect at a common point which is point O. So the resultant which is a resultant force R will also intersect at that particular point which is point O because uh, the resultant force R is the resultant of the three forces here. So resultant for R, force R is a simplified force system because it, it composed only with single force R which will represent or will be equivalent to the original force system which is composed of uh, many forces and this figure which is three forces so this this what makes it uh, the resultant force uh, very important uh, plays a very important role in engineering mechanics it simplifies a force system to a simple form then to get the value of r we just simply Calculate its components, which is Rx and Ry, using this formula. Uh, summation forces X is the X components of all the concurrent forces. Then summation forces Y is the Y component of all the concurrent forces. Then also remember that there will be no uh, coupled resultant because if we sum up moment at O, remember that all forces are acting at the origin or at point O. So if we sum up moment at that particular point, there will be no moment. So summation moment equals zero. So the resultant force is only a force R, which is located at the point of intersection or point of concurrency. So let's have an example. So we have here for the given figure, we have a force R is the resultant of the other three concurrent forces. So determine the magnitude of P and R. So as you can see in the figure, we have four forces. R here is the resultant of the three other forces, meaning if we write this again, so we have P and we have 80 pounds and we have 100 pounds. So this is 20 degrees. This is P. So the resultant of these three forces is, write this as Y and X. So the resultant is this force R right here, which is located at 30 degrees with respect to the x-axis. So the question is, we determine the resultant, the magnitude of the resultant, and also the magnitude of the one, one force uh, in the original concurrent force system, which is P. So to do that, we will have two equations. Obviously, we have Rx equals summation forces x, and Ry equals summation forces y. So for Rx, we have the x component of R. Obviously, it is R cosine 30 degrees from this particular from this particular figure. So the components, summation forces x, we will add the x component. So we only have 80 and P because 100 pounds is vertical component. For P, we have P sine 20 because 20 degrees is... Uh, the x component is opposite to the 20 degrees angle. Then we have 80 is going to the left, so that is minus 80. So if we simplify this equation, we have P sine 20 degrees minus R cosine 30 degrees equals 80. So this will be our first equation. For the second formula, we have Ry equals summation forces Y. Obviously, Ry is... Uh, going up from this figure, so we have uh, R sine 30 is equals to P is also going upward, so that is positive P cosine 20. And we have 100 pounds is going downward, so that is minus 100. So writing the equation again, or arranging it to the same manner as the first equation, so we have P cosine 20 minus R sine 30 is equals to 100. So we have equation 2. Solving the two equations simultaneously, we will get the answer of P and R. 
So, P, we will have uh, 72.5 uh, pounds. Then we have for R is we have negative 63.74 pounds. So, as you can see, we have a negative value of R. So, what does this mean? Is this answer is correct or not? So, the answer is 63.74 pounds is correct. So, meaning we already have the answer. But the negative sign only indicates that the figure, in this original figure, the direction of R is not in the up to the right, meaning it passes through or its direction is opposite to that direction, meaning the correct direction of R is somewhere here. This must be the direction of R, which is opposite to the original direction. So the negative sign indicates that its direction is opposite to that given direction. So our final answer will be something like this. So P is positive, the same direction because we got the positive answer. Since R is negative, we will change its direction. It will not be like this. It will go into this direction. This is the correct direction of R. So we will have here our last type of force system for coplanar force system. So we have the parallel coplanar force system. So this is a type of force system where all the forces are parallel to each other. So it may be parallel to the y-axis or parallel to the x-axis. So from this figure, all the forces are parallel to the y-axis. So the main objective of this one is to replace the force system to a resultant force, which is this force right here, force R, uh, to a single particular force, then we want to locate where is that particular resultant force is located from, uh, let's say from the origin or the uh, point where the X and Y axis intersects. So to do that, what we will do is we will simply uh, calculate force R. So to do that, uh, in this figure, we, we first calculate the equivalent force couple system of the parallel force system. To do that, we add first the forces, which is simply summation of all the forces. So in this case, we have F1 plus F2 and F3. So basically, from this figure, it is summation forces Y. If all the forces are parallel, the Y axis. Then the couple resultant is uh, counterclockwise positive. We have F1 times X1 plus F2 times X2 plus F3 times X3. So all are positive, positive because the effects of all the forces are counterclockwise. Then after that, we replace this uh, couple resultant to Two, two forces, which is equal to R, we'll do it like this, this one, then distance with X, such that couple resultant equals to R times X. So we will erase this couple because we already replaced the, this with two forces, such that X equals couple resultant over R. So these two forces right here, this R and this R will negate with each other, so it will become zero. This will leave us to this one, which is force R. So this is going, ah, the, the direction of the forces are counterclockwise. So basically this is upward and downward. So this is R and R. So this is X. So this one will negate and we will leave it here with uh, force R at a distance X. Another way to think of it in an easier point of view is that the resultant moment of this point, or shall we say the moment of this resultant force about point O is equal to this uh, moment, the original force system about point O. So in that case, we will just Sum up, some example, we have summation moment O here is equals to summation moment O in this particular direction. So we have F1, X1 plus F2, X2 plus F3, X3, counterclockwise positive. So the same with this one, it, it becomes R times X. 
So since we already have the value of r, which is f1 plus f2 plus f3, we can simply calculate x using this equation right here. You just sum up moment in a particular point, let's say point O, to both the figure, figure the original force system and the resultant force system. So we can calculate the distance x. That's another easier way so that we don't need to 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 get uh, to do this step which is calculating the equivalent force coupled system. We just directly go to this figure. So let's have an example. Replace the loading system by an equivalent force coupled system and specify where the resultant line of action intersects the beam measured from point O. So we will do that the trick here where we will not calculate the equivalent force coupled system. So this is the beam. This is point O. This is spin reaction. Then we have R. And we will have X. So this is the answer already. We have R and X. We just need to calculate its value. So to calculate R, we have summation of all the forces. Obviously, all forces are downward, so we will just use downward positive because so that we will write all the values as positive. Uh, even though we know that upward y is positive, uh, we will still get the same answer. We just write the downward positive. So we have R is equals to 500 positive because it is downward plus 250 plus 500. So we will get R equals 1 to 50 pounds. So the answer is positive. Therefore, it is downward because we interchange the sign convention. So this is 1 to 50 pounds. We will also interchange the the summation moment O is equals to R times X. Uh, we will use clockwise positive because the moment effect of the three forces here is all clockwise. The same as R. R times x is a moment about point O is also clockwise. So we can change the sign convention if we want to. Uh, after all, we will get the same answer. Summation moment O will start here. All the forces are positive because it is clockwise. So first one is 500 times 3 plus 250. So 250 here is 3 plus 3 which is 6 uh, plus... 500, uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. Is equals to 1 to 50, the other figure here, 1 to 50 times x. So we will get a value of x, which is... So the answer is 6 feet. 6 feet. So this will be the answer. So meaning, uh, the final answer is this. 1, 250 pounds at x equals 6 feet to the right at point O. So meaning we can replace this force system with a different force, force system which is a simplified force system with one force which is 1 to 50 pounds at a distance of 6 feet from the origin. So making it easier. Because it is only composed of one force. Let us have here some practice problems to check what you have learned in this video. So first one is a general coplanar force system. So first is replace the loading system by an equivalent resultant force and specify where the resultant's line of action intersects the member AB measured from A. So the answer for this problem is so the next problem is a parallel for system. So the weight of the various components of weight prop are shown. So replace the system of forces by an equivalent resultant force and specify its location measured from point A. So the answer for this problem is
So the last one is we have here a concurrent concurrent force system. So the resultant of the three concurrent forces, the figure acting on the eye bolt, is a force R equals 800 J pounds. That remains the magnitude of the force P and the angle theta that specifies the direction of the 900 pound force. The answer to this problem is So thank you so much for listening and watching to this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos to come.